Yeah, you, you got it right. Take one. Okay, this is take one because something tells me there's going to be lots of takes. GPS, make sure I don't make sure we don't get lost. Ha! How can you get lost from Fredericton to St. John? My guy's not even four lane yet. Okay, never mind that. How you doing? I'm doing great. We can still say good morning. We got a couple minutes left. One minute. Okay, so where your what's your name? Well, Lori Vance, or you know me, Charles. Uh, no, you, but Lori, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, do, do, yeah, exactly, <laughs> do you have some kind of ego problem, you know, like, everybody knows who I am, just like me, I made an appointment, a woman said, uh, excuse me, what's your name, oh my god, sorry, my, my ego, okay, so let's start that all over again, Lori, and you're an activist. Good afternoon. Oh, good yeah, good afternoon. I guess so. Uh, By the way, this is not uh, CBC uh, Global, <laughs> come on, don't be so formal, let's just chat. Okay, so, are you still with us? One minute, <laughs> we haven't talked about nothing. That's okay. Where we're going? Well, we're headed to the uh, courthouse in St. John. Why? Well, to uh, find out what's going on uh, with this tragedy that happened uh, last Friday. What happened? Well, a uh, gentleman was in an altercation and he wound up dying. Who is this gentleman? Well, his name's uh, Anthony or Tony Dwyer. Okay. Um, I guess at this point, you know, from what we've learned, uh, it's not about uh, him being a veteran. He was a veteran. And I guess, fortunately, there's going to be a lot of veterans there today. 54 years old. Uh, 54, yeah. 54, and the veteran, where, where was he stationed? Well, he was in the Navy, so we didn't uh, cross paths a lot. I knew of him and heard of him and seen him uh, and the work he's done with veterans because uh, I, I guess, you know, since I was Army, I, I tend to see more of the Army veterans in my day-to-day uh, -day travels and he would be more on the Navy side. I hear that yesterday and I'm sorry, but I hear that yesterday and uh, would it be very hard to be in the Navy uh, to have, uh, just like you expect PTSD in the Army on the ground? Uh, Navy, you don't think there wouldn't be any problem there, would you? Well, you know, without taking an hour to get into the complexities of PTSD, yeah, that's uh, true. It's, not, it's not just the, uh, the Canadian Forces, the Army, the Navy, it's about every human being. I, I think mean, I have PTSD. Well, look, we've got police officers, uh, let's look at the, fire, the firemen. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah. to see dead bodies, well. dead bodies around. Yeah, and that, that's, that's difficult to, to deal with. It's yeah. not about combat, it's not about being a veteran, it's not about being a fireman, it's about being a human being and our mind works in, in a certain way, so anybody's susceptible to it. Yeah, okay, okay, like you said, we could talk about this for an hour. Yeah. So the guy was there, 54 years old, and next thing you know, he went, he went into, allegedly, a confrontation with a 19-year-old mm -hmm. at the boardwalk, and what time was this? About 8 o'clock? No, uh, 11.30ish, uh, was it on Friday night, yes. Okay, Friday night, and this is... <clears throat> The guy, the young kid, this is not your typical uh, St. Johner, as he held two jobs and uh, was working and everything. And it well, yeah, now that the uh, facts come out uh, on both sides, both sides, yes, yeah. you know, it's going to be the, the best facts. I mean, people aren't going to talk about, uh, you know, how bad anybody was, and I'm not implying that anyone was. No. Uh, it's an unfortunate uh, incident. Uh, I'm headed to court to get the facts, find out, you know, what what happened, and how can we all protect ourselves. But he wasn't attacked because he was a vet. No, I, I want to make that clear, and I understand from court. I do have, you know, some more facts from sitting in court, although it's brief. Uh, the media reports, the family witnesses, I've uh, I've heard and seen a lot. And you know, I'm going I'm to be honest uh, and and fair, which which I try to be. Um, the facts will come out. We can't speculate right now. It's definitely not a 19-year-old punk, and it's definitely not a hot-headed 54-year-old. But I mean, I can see how veterans or any older people like Charles I could see you saying to a young fellow or even a middle-aged fellow yeah. you'd say you know smarten up you, you know be yeah. uh, 
be nice about that or don't push in line or whatever um, and things you know people are human they the altercations happen yeah. uh, I had many 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 fist fights yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what very very fortunate that I never killed nobody or I never got killed mm -hmm. it only takes one punch well isn't that uh about uh, uh, your, your life, about humans, and, and how fragile life is. Yeah. I mean, I, you can't convince me that this young man had the intent on punching somebody and killing somebody. I don't think anybody would, unless it's uh, your, you know, premeditative uh, murderer or something. So like we're that. going to the bail hearing. What do you yes. think is going to happen here? You know, uh, the law, as you know, you've been around it, the law works in mysterious ways. I don't think... Money! Well, that too, but I don't think we can really predict the outcome. I mean, with the outpouring from the community, I could see him getting some sort of, you know, supervised bail or something and be released to a family member, you know, because at this point, from what I see in court, you know, it wasn't intentional. But also, the uh, the judge would have to look at society and say, okay, is this uh, young man safe? Uh, is releasing him going to cause harm to the community? So the judge has a tough decision, but uh, it is Judge Lemurise that's there today, and he's a fair judge, uh, very, very fair judge from what I hear. So I think everybody is in good hands today. I don't know the kid, but personally, I think he should be release uh, supervision whatever if they release Dennis Holland well yeah you know. I mean uh, does money and prestige have uh, a place in society no I think careful consideration should be given and I'm sure this judge will and you know I'm, I'm tending to agree I might ruffle some feathers and in, in, you know on certain perceived sides you but, know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, it is my opinion, and uh, I think uh, society, e e either way, society would be uh, just as well off. I don't think, he's definitely not going to go out and do this again, I can almost assure you, because uh, I'm sure any young man would, would learn his lesson, especially if, if he didn't mean to. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, no, sure no, no, no. Oh, I'm sure he'll have, uh, you know, you have a 19-year-old, his life is ruined. And never mind the alcohol, never mind enjoy the marijuana, never mind enjoy the cigarette. You pull a stunt like that, no more internet, no more Facebook. Well, that's quite a punishment as well. No, uh, that is yeah. worse addiction. The internet yeah. is worse addiction than you would go in, in, in the jail cell and say, oh my God, oh my God. And then... Well, we have to look too. Is, you know, is jail going to serve uh, a 19 year old that's presumed to be innocent right now? Is it going to serve in the best interest for him and the family? And, you know, Tony being the compassionate guy, uh, and, and, and myself, because I, I need to look at this factual, I need to remove all the emotions out of it. And at the end of the day, you know, I hope the judge makes the right decision that serves both of the families and society. We'll do another one when we get back. Now, let's talk about, of course, we, it wouldn't be uh, me if I didn't talk about me, me, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder, I predict, I hope, I pray. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, some, as, uh, Pierre Trudeau, uh, Pierre Trudeau, Justin Trudeau <laughs> came to Fredericton, and um, the Prime Minister acknowledged me as media. So uh, I'm going to go there. I wonder if the sheriff will give me a hard time to say, oh, where are you going with that camera? He's in my pocket. Uh, is he going to remove it? Are they going to Are they going to give me a hard time? Which I predict they will because uh, attitude, but that's me. Well, as long as you don't use it in court. Uh, duh. Why would a per duh. Duh. Yeah, exactly. duh. That's five years in jail if you do you know, some I, stuff I, like that. I listen to them in court. I don't even put my uh, phone on airplane no, no, mode. No, no, no. I turn it off. No, my thing is, yeah. this camera is always with me. Yes. If they take this camera, they should take every smartphone, yeah, take exactly. them all. You know what I mean? Yeah, but right. anyway, then never mind me, me, me. We'll <laughs> see what's going to happen. I predict that he will be released. And once again, this is not a veteran thing. It's not like they went no, around no. and beat up uh, a vet. That's, this is not no. what happened.
it's just a simple altercation. Um, you know, when I did go at court Monday, I went to find out what was going on. Uh, people were emotional on both sides. I would, uh, well, people won't see it before the bail hearing, but in the upcoming uh, trials, uh, if it does happen, uh, I just plead to everyone, let's let the courts handle this. Yeah. Let's go and yeah. witness, yeah. support whoever you want to support, and we'll call it a day. And what, and what we're going to do is you're going to drop me off uh, Union Street, and you're going to park this car, and you don't even know me. <laughs> exactly. Okay? No problem. <laughs>